Hey guys, we're sitting here with two legends. Uh, obviously, they need no introduction. This is Ravi Zacharias. He is the legendary voice for truth in our generation. And uh, so thank you. Indeed, Ravi Zacharias was one of the most influential men of our generation and perhaps the past 2,000 years of professing Christendom. His ministry was international. He visited pulpits of all different denominations. He was well received at conferences of all kinds. He was an apologist, an evangelist, and a statesman. Yesterday, President Trump said by making the intellectual case for Christianity, Ravi Zacharias was instrumental in helping millions of people around the world come to know the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to welcome my friend, smartest man in the world, Ravi Zacharias. Billy Graham was a great evangelist, and I think Ravi Zacharias is the great apologist. Hey, Dr. Ravi, it's Chris Kane here. You have had such a profound impact and influence on my life as an apologist, as an evangelist. You know, I just went over to my bookshelf and just grabbed a few of the books that I've got that have helped to shape and frame the whole way I think about Jesus, about making a, a defense for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in our day and age in a way that's full of grace, in a way that's full of mercy, in a way that's full of truth, and a way that's full of love. Now, I've said this to you and I just want to say it in front of the world that nobody has framed and shaped my thinking like you have in this area. I'm so grateful to God for your witness. I'm so grateful to God for your testimony. I'm so grateful to God that you've helped raise up people like me that have gone into the world to proclaim the truth of the word of Jesus Christ. We love you so much. As you can see from the videos, he was lavished with flatteries from all corners of Christendom. In May 2020, Ravi Zacharias suddenly and unexpectedly perished from a malignant sarcoma, a very rare and aggressive form of cancer. Judging by the testimony of those that knew Ravi Zacharias the best, his family members, his friends, those that were involved in his ministry, it would appear to most that there was no reason to doubt the integrity of this man or to suspect that he was in deep, secret, dark sin. But just four and a half months after his death, allegations of the worst sort started to surface. Thus, RZIM Ministries, holding these allegations in doubt, called for a private, independent investigation. What they found was worse than they could have imagined. Without even completing a thorough and exhaustive investigation, the evidence was so overwhelming, they concluded that the accusations were not only true, but the crimes were more numerous than anyone previously thought. The investigation revealed that these were no isolated incidents of mere moral failure, as many professing Christian leaders would hope to portray. Rather, they proved an undeniable pattern of premeditated sexual abuse. The man Louis Giglio called the legendary voice of truth for our generation was in fact a legendary serial womanizer and whoremonger, a man who was using money from his ministry to silence the women he seduced, abused, and forced into sexual relationships, leading them into a form of prostitution and sexual slavery. Ravi Zacharias, having abused his victims, would after warn them that they must keep silent or millions of souls would be lost because of his prominent influence among professing Christendom today. The crimes are so dark, dear viewer, and shameful, we cannot even speak of the details. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 12 says, It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. 
upon obtaining the personal, private cell phone of Ravi Zacharias, the investigators found that he had well over 200 suggestive and even nude photos. He also had over 200 contacts of female massage therapists from all over the world. The investigation only included a small number of these women. While Ravi boldly declared his absolute fidelity to his wife throughout their marriage, he was not only engaging in communication by text with many of these women, but also called one of them the love of his life. He also created the Touch of Hope, which he called a humanitarian effort on the part of RZIM, meeting short-term needs for long-term gains. This was in actuality a purely discretionary fund with no guidelines for how the money was to be used or distributed. Ravi paid for schooling, apartments, and other financial needs for the women he was snaring for his personal long-term gains. This is truly a horrifying abomination. What was Ravi doing having his own personal massage therapist traveling with him everywhere he went, a female? Why wasn't RZIM insisting that he would have a male massage therapist? Why were they allowing this man of such prominent report to be completely unaccountable in these matters? Even in 2017, when accusations from a woman in Canada came forth that Ravi had engaged with her in inappropriate behavior through text messages, Ravi Zacharias refused to give his personal phone over to the hands of the RZIM investigators. And did they raise a cry? Did they demand that this man would come to the light? Did they demand Christian accountability? No. Not only did they allow him not to give over his phone, but they allowed him to sue this woman and accuse her before the eyes of the world of blackmail, of extortion. And this suit ended up being closed and settled with a non-disclosure agreement where Ravi Zacharias paid $250,000 to this woman that she would keep silence. This is truly an abomination and surely only a small taste of the oppression, the absolute and shameful abuse that was taking place as Ravi traveled throughout the earth, not only defiling the bodies of these women, but confusing their consciences. The testimony of one of these women is that Ravi demanded that after he had abused her, she would bow her knees with him and pray to God, thanking God for giving this woman to him as a reward for his faithful service to the Lord all these years. What an abomination. In light of such horrifying and overwhelming hypocrisy, how did the leaders of the Passion Conference respond? Remember, Louis Giglio called Ravi the legendary voice of truth for our generation and one of God's most amazing vessels on earth. He beckoned to the hundreds of millions of college-age students and leaders who trusted his discernment to put their trust in the teaching and example of Ravi Zacharias. And I could not be happier than I am in this moment right now. And uh, as we've led up to passion, a lot of people have just gone crazy when they've uh, known that God had sent this particular speaker to passion this year. And other people have been like, I don't know that name. It's not one of the six names I hear every time I hear about passion or whatever the last conference was I went to. But I wanna tell you, we have an unbelievable privilege this morning because you are about to hear from God through one of the most amazing vessels on earth. He, he is the head of uh, Ravi Zacharias International Ministries. And 
I could say so many things about him, but I, I, I don't want to get off on any one of those tangents because it would just take time that I really want him to share today. But he speaks all over the world, literally on any given day that you're going to class and sitting in Chipotle. He could be in the Middle East. He could be at Oxford. He could be at Harvard. He could be somewhere in Europe. And he speaks to the smartest people in the world. He debates the brightest people on earth. And he stands in line for hours and hours after every engagement. And he answers the question of anyone who has one. This guy is so gifted that we could start with you and let everyone here ask a question about anything. And I would feel pretty comfortable just sitting right there watching Robbie Zacharias answer every single question. Wow. And so his story is extraordinary. His message is, I believe, in some ways unparalleled on earth at the moment. And I couldn't be happier to introduce him to you today. So Robbie, we're ready to hear from you. And uh, would you give a big passion? Come on, 2016 welcome in all three venues to my friend. Remember, upon Ravi's death, such great swelling words of commendation were uttered before the entire world. Did Louis Giglio publicly apologize for leading those souls astray? No. Not one word of apology, not one attempt to humble himself before this generation, who he claims to be leading for the renown of Christ. Not one doctrinal explanation for how this could have even happened. Instead, passion is wiping their mouth and saying they have done no wickedness. How can this be? How can such a prominent professing Christian leader like Louis Giglio hold his peace at such a time? How can he shame all of these women who have suffered under the hands of this hypocrite, who abused them, who seduced them, and who silenced them with threats and with money? How can Louis Giglio allow this abomination to go unspoken for? How can he leave up the funeral ceremony where he commended him and flattered him and spoke of his greatness? and gave honor to where honor was not due. Even if passion holds their peace, dear viewer, God has seen it. And will not the judge of all the earth do right?